Okay, Apache Cassandra. Uh, Apache Cassandra is a database that is to store the data as like our uh, other databases. So it is a NoSQL database, the way they say it, because it will not uh, uh, have any uh, structured query uh, format which it follows to store its uh, data. So before we go in detail about the Apache Cassandra database, we will see what is a database, what is a database management system, and little introduction regarding that. Okay, this portion, this Apache Cassandra, is a part of a data warehousing which uh, lies under the module two. Okay, so MySQL database. Uh, uh, Sanjeev Jha sir will take from next week. So before that we will see Apache Cassandra which is a NoSQL database. So what is a database management system? So we can store the data in our local machines in the memory but when the volume of a data is a huge and if we wanted to store it in a structure format like, like rows and columns or like the CSV files that is the Excel sheets so we can easily uh, fetch a particular data or not then we store the data into a storage unit where the uh, size of this storage will be huge not like the one which is available in our uh, laptop or in our desktop okay so it is a software which helps to store retrieve and manage the data so the it is uh, uh, the most prevalent one for the database management system is the relational database management system so the rdbms is the relational management database system okay initially it has come up with the database management system and after that uh, where you can uh, store the data and also you can relate between the two data information where it comes into the picture of a relational database management system okay so how we store your data in any database you see you as uh, rows and columns okay uh, you store your data in your database in the form of a uh, rows and uh, columns so this we call it as a row, a row one, row two, many rows. Same like if you can imagine our Excel sheets, likewise it gets stored. And this we call it as a column one, column two, and all these data are stored. So this we generate in our database management system, we create tables, okay and in the, uh, multiple tables not only one table multiple tables and if we create a relationship between the tables say i create an employee table to store the employee data employee table containing information like ids or his age or any information and I, I can i create another table like a department then if i try to create a relationship between the employee table and the department table a relation saying which employee is belonging to which department using some column okay in both the employee table and uh, uh, a relation uh, employee table and the department table then there comes the concept of the relational between the tables okay how data are stored in uh, using a database management system as it is a software it stores the data in the form of a tables and when you create a relationship between the multiple tables and you write uh, queries queries are to fetch the data from the databases uh, I, large queries then this is the relational database management system okay in the database management system where we enforce the relationship between tables then that is the relational management system which is the one prevailingly used in uh, today's uh, environment in, in today's uh, uh, technology okay is a database that stores data in the form of table called the relations and these tables include numerous rows and columns often called as records or fields Okay. Each record typically contains its own unique ID which is nothing but the key. So the relationship is enforced between the two tables using a particular unique key unique key which is nothing but unique id which is nothing but the key we say it okay this is about the relational databases okay and uh, uh, relational databases as see we are writing java language to write our program or uh, to enforce some functionalities right in such a way then how do you query or how do you fetch uh, retrieve the data from a databases you know database management system is going to store retrieve or manage your data so how, what is the way to retrieve the data which is present in your storage unit that is the database 
that is using the structured query language okay this is a computer language that is used to establish the communication between the user and the database so you have a storage unit that we call it as a database and you are storing the data into the database in the form of a tables and the tables also having a relations so we call it as a rdbms relational databases okay so we uh, how do we retrieve the data from the database or how do we manage or store the data into the database we use a language which is nothing but the structured query language okay uh, Using this language, we can pass queries to store the data and to retrieve it. Okay, that for using the row column relationships, we provide the relationship in our SQL queries and we will uh, store the data or retrieve the data. So, one of sample query is like you can select, say, I create a table to store the customer information, okay, like uh, his order which he has placed and his uh, uh, customer IDs or the uh, his type and uh, uh, date created okay in order to retrieve all the information of the customers table i use a query so this is a sample query or an example query okay which is um, uh, which is of type structured query language about this query language how to write completely you will see it in mysql because mysql is a relational database management system okay or uh, dbms okay that you will see it there but now i'll get give a little introduction before we go and see the non sql no sql database okay cassandra a little introduction so about what is a database and when i say relations how they are related i say that they are related between the two tables by a key say this you consider it as a product table okay which contains the information about the product and this if you consider it as a customer table so it means in a, in a, in a shop you have a customer table where it contains the information about the customer ids his name and his mobile number and you can have another information about the sh uh, information about what are the products are present in the shop okay so in in the supermarket or in the shop so that will be, you can store it in a product table okay how to create this and all that you will see it later on okay imagine there are two tables which containing information okay so in the product table uh, we can relate this a customer table and the product table using a key like primary key or the foreign key okay so you can uniquely identify the customer who has purchased a particular product say he has purchased the product like a pencil okay this customer has purchased the using this key concept so using a, establishing a relationship between these two tables you can uh, you can find the information that is you can club together many tables and get the information okay okay that detail it's okay i think you can think that the relation database model database system is nothing but all all the tables most of the tables you can relate it and the rela relation can happen using a particular key okay that we call it as a primary key and a foreign key in another table okay so furthermore is this okay till now or do i have to explain more about the uh, database management system we will see in detail uh, madam yes. what is the difference between simple sql and a mysql mysql is the database and name okay mysql sql is a database sql is a database name similarly like oracle or post care databases is there no so it is a database name this is a relational database management system okay it's just a name there is no difference it is also a sql sql is a query language that's what i said it is like a programming language okay we write java programming right to enforce some activities about an object likewise if i wanted to see this is a storage unit you can think this is the database okay database is a storage unit which stores the data dbms is a software okay where it uh, it tells about software in the sense like uh, some application which tells how the storage is happening okay data means what anything like your employee data or your customer data or your student data all those datas 
still now we are seeing all this these are like a very minimal data that you can store it in your hard disk itself okay so you don't have to have a separate machine to store those data say if it is a more data like uh, millions of a data like uh, 100 millions of uh, student information or the employee information or the complete employee information of a company like oracle or a google okay then that we cannot store it in a small hard disk right you need a complete storage unit or or a server with a large space okay so that's where come into uh, comes into the picture of database management system so this storage how you can how you can access the database or how you can retrieve the data which is present in the database you need to have an interface right like to talk with the database that data that interface is nothing but the sql structured query language interface using this language you can talk with the storage unit which is nothing but the database is this okay so one of the uh, uh, sql uh, one of the sql is the mysql okay mysql is a structured query language a database okay it supports all the query languages of same like a sql and it also stores the data and retrieves us. that you will see it while you are reading mysql okay it's a type of sql database sql also you can say okay or you can call it as a mysql okay anyway you can, sorry you can call it as sql or you can call it as mysql sql no, not mysql sql okay any doubts in this or we want to go we will see in little detail also in this one yes uh, madam yeah what is the uh, sql server and what is the uh, between, difference between sql server and sql my sql sql my sql is a software yes it is a software it is a software the server is there what is that server you are asking see yeah. uh, um what how it works is like uh, it is the architecture okay it is all in the see my sequel when i say it is this uh, database how it is getting stored is with there is a client server architecture okay client server architecture okay uh, client is the user okay i am the user okay and server is the place where your data is actually stored okay so when i say my sql database it is a database it comes with the two components which is the client and the server okay server is the place where your actual data gets stored okay and the client is the interface who communicates with the server okay how you can communicate with the server uh, using the language sql okay this is the language he uses to uh, uh, see the data to retrieve the data or to list out the data okay or to add the data into the server or to retrieve the data into the server so this is the storage unit okay and this whole thing is the mysql database you can say it so mysql is a relational database management system okay uh, it means it it can allow you to create how you can store the data in your server okay how the data will be stored is in the form of row uh, tables okay and the tables contains a uh, rows and columns uh, madam uh, yes. that's one question that is not it okay uh, suppose uh, i have a client so client need to send the data to us so how what is the procedure how they'll send to us to data because they won't give the access to their server right they need to send some data to us to analyze right so what procedure they have to follow that uh, to send the data so you are talking about the um, uh, the other perspective so plainly say yeah. for example i am a client i wanted to store any data into the server i use this sql language okay i will write like uh, uh, i think it is better that my sql is taken first okay see i will create a table say i wanted to store the employee information into my database okay so i will create a table using the this is the sql commands we say sql commands or sql queries that i will write create a table i will create a table into the database 
okay and some table name like employee i will give it okay this is how he communicates the client is writing a query or sql commands saying create a table he will log into the server okay just first you imagine that he is allowed to log into the server and he is creating a table into the uh, server okay he will first create a database there can be multiple databases created say for example he is trying to create a database for employees all the employees in the company okay he creates a database db and he creates a table for this uh, uh, database and he inserts value into that table okay this is how he does it see it is not that the server is not given access to the client then how you will retrieve the data see uh, there are many things which are involved in the my database management system like how a client can query the query means retrieve the data say i store employee information employee id in the table okay in the table like employee id employee name and his age and address i am storing it okay say for example one you can imagine this as a table one name as a peter and two name as a john all these are stored in the table table naming employee okay so uh, this is a stored in the database okay this is stored in the storage unit then how do i retrieve the uh, employee id one okay peter information then i will write a sql query a sql query like a select a, uh, a star from or select a particular employee peter from this table i'll write an sql query okay this sql query is given in the client interface okay client will write this sql query and the database engine okay there will be an engine or the processing unit that will that will retrieve the uh, employee information of a peter and gives us the result in the table format this is how the complete work happens in a database in a relational database or in center also it is going to happen in that way only like um, how you will store the data and retrieve the data using an sql only maybe i'll take a little introduction on sql too okay then it will be clear i think okay is this okay uh, durlab yes yes thank you thank you it's okay okay so and based on the accessibility given to the client or to other users that uh, is the management activity that you will learn it in db mysql databases okay how you can create a user and how you can give your privileges to view the ta tables and all those stuff so you will you will read that in uh, mysql okay ma'am apache cassandra is also the storage unit Yes, it is a database. It is a storage unit. Yes, like MySQL or Oracle. Oracle, everyone will be familiar of. Like Oracle database, they keep saying it, like Oracle and other databases. Cassandra Apache is also a database, but the way it is, uh, but what kind of data, type of data it is storing, no? In Apache Cassandra varies. Okay, whereas the type of data that we store in MySQL or RDB, uh, sorry, uh, or Oracle or Postgre or um, there is one in uh, Microsoft, uh, MariaDB and all those things. These are the examples of relational databases, relational database management system how the relational database management system stores the data in the storage unit or in the uh, databases in the form of uh, rows and columns that is in the form of tables okay so tables how it is comprising of it is comprising of rows and columns okay whereas a cassandra stores the data in a different way okay they use uh, terminologies uh, like a column family okay that we will see it in detail a little after after a while okay column family the way it is storing data see in um, uh, uh, rdbms or in mysql and all you can write it will be like an excel sheet only okay row and column row one will be many rows will be there okay and a column okay column one column two column three will be there 
okay so this uh, uh, in the cassandra it will be different way the storing of data inside the column will be different that i will tell you and why it is a different is because of the type of the data which we get it okay see we are learning data science uh, and here we are going to talk about the data how it is going to be there data can be of many types nowadays right it is cannot be see data when i say it can be in the text format you can store the data in text format or the text format is in your linux machine you will save it in a text or in any format it can be stored in the rows and column formats like csv files you can also have data in the form of uh, like um, um video files audio files okay those are all different formats it will not be like text files right and also you can have uh, uh, data so um, what else we can, xml formats you can say we'll see configuration files those looks like xml formats and we can also say that data can be in the form of key value pairs okay it is like uh, uh, matching of a key and a value and data say can be in the graph formats okay a graphical format or a, a graphical format you can imagine an example like a network okay how the traffic goes in the network likewise format and uh, most probably since we are learning about the datas and we are going to learn about the big data also so the storage when it comes uh, uh, when when we talk about a storing of a different types of data okay then uh, uh, there comes into a evaluation of the different types of databases okay when the huge the volume of a data is also going to be huge and the format is also not going to be plain so we say like there shall be structured datas and unstructured datas structured data a good example is like the csv file okay you can easily map okay an employee data into a row and column okay an employee a column you can have okay maybe i will take a new slide okay so uh, uh, structured data and we can say that we can receive the unstructured data unstructured data or semi structure many forms are there but first we will identify this two structured I can say like the excel sheets okay excel as sheets where you can or the tables which we create in our uh, data uh, like rdbms rdbms which are structured in such a way that you can define those data or easily fit into rows and columns okay rows and columns we can think like we have we've been learning java right so when i say an employee object or employee data we wanted to store in a database then you can have this uh, fields like employee id employee name his age his address okay his salary and his um, department all those information so each of this fields that belongs to an employee i can easily represent it in a column employee name age address and salary okay and a department something like that we can easily represent them in the column and the data for each of this id number like one john 30 chennai and salary 50,000 and department as IT okay and again uh, Mary all these things I can easily store in the uh, I can easily define structure this data and store it in a rows and column format so this is a row and this is a column okay this one thing we will say it as a record okay we can call it as a record or tuple okay in RDBMS language in MySQL you will say like that only okay and there are other type of data which you cannot store it in the form of rows and columns okay or you have to define the rows and columns in a different way okay in that cases that is why the evolution of a new databases like cassandra and mongodb uh, and what other uh, things are the hbase and uh, 
those things have come into picture where the data which is not structured like this in the rdbms can be stored okay so some uh, some information like um, a document type okay document type you say like uh, uh, the data so will be like uh, Mm, uh, two three lines together okay like in our uh, java file we write uh, some code inside a method right like a block of uh, uh, block of uh, lines you can call it as a one uh, data okay that you have to store how you can store it in the form of a documents okay or how you can store it in the form of a column family we'll see that in uh, furthermore now you may not understand but you can think like unstructured data or uh, mm, uh, like a video files and all we will not know where it is going to end okay where the ending will be there start of the file you can uh, start of the video you can find out where it will end you, do, you don't know and uh, the start of next start of the line you will not know right likewise the data and all how we can store it for that came into the new evaluation of the new databases okay so that is where we are going to see one of that is the column database okay is this okay is this clear so structured data you can use the relational databases to store it and uh, unstructured databases you will see you will have the newly evolved databases to store those kind of data because data are coming in uh, rapidly more uh, uh, from many ways right it is not like only it is not like before it's like if it is a whatsapp nowadays whatsapp contains all this like a text data and videos you can share audios you can share so all this data is how where you can store it you need a different type of databases to store this data okay like our um, facebook or netflix or netflix and all it is a streaming data streaming data means continuously live data which is coming into picture then those type of data how you will store as we are seeing a learning about uh, data science so we also need to process this data right process and bring a uh, uh, take a business solution okay we process the data you will arrive at a solution or result using that result you will arrive at uh, you will take a business decision whether okay that we will see it later on okay till now it is cl clear like a mysql what is a mysql mysql is a relational database management system when i say it is a relational database management system you can easily fit uh, the data whichever we get it in the rows and column format okay into a table into the rows and column multiple tables you can create it related data uh, we can put it in uh, a particular table and you can have relation between the two tables and all using the keys whereas the unstructured data storage is differs and it based on the type of a data you can have a different databases to store the unstructured data okay that is the overall gist is this okay uh, madam yes uh, when we store the unstructured data in a passenger so it is stored in organized format or it is stored as it is in a uh, like unstructured format it will be stored in an organized format only how it is getting organized that i will we will see it in later sessions okay okay so every column for the cassandra is like a, a, you know kind of table may i assume like that Mm, no uh, every it is not a table okay it is a table where the columns here we match with one column with one value only right whereas in the cassandra uh, structure column family means in the column itself you can have uh, multiple values so that is how it is it will get stored we'll see that in de detail okay. later on okay uh, because i have not come into that so row you can identify each column can have multiple values like um, uh, one an example i can say likewise is like it is like hbase only people from other batch they know hbase so it is like hbase only like um, say i have uh, employee information employee id and uh, employee address okay so the particular column itself can have his street uh, street number and uh, his uh, street name and uh, uh, area and pin code all those things so in a single column itself you can have multiple data 
and this will be identified in a by a row only because all are stored in the row this one row for one employee say for employee peter or for employee john okay and he can have a multiple information in a single column this is how it gets stored it is organized but uh, collective of uh, information can be stored in a single column that is why it is called as column family okay we'll see that in detail later on once we move further okay any other doubts till now madam it is a cassandra is a open source like java yes it is open source okay all the emerging technologies are related to unstructured ones mm, uh, unstructured ones uh, they i mean we cannot be fit into one uh, traditional uh, databases that is why it is all coming into picture they are all recently in 2000s or in 95s afterwards uh, all this uh, uh, emerging uh, databases are created and uh, it has taken as a project like for different companies and uh, later on it is made available to the outside world so that any one can use it for their uh, need okay based on need basis that i will see that okay okay is this okay then can i move on further okay so uh, we have seen about the structured query language structured so in one thing you can uh, as i told uh, the structure is maintained in a relational database management system okay like i said like you will have a particular column with uh, its column information and you can retrieve this uh, tuple i we can talk, call it as or at row or a record okay particular record this whole line using the uh, sql like language okay sql language like uh, select star that you will learn it in your how to write a sql query and all that you will learn it later on and even in here we will use that okay so this cassandra falls into the uh, type of no sql databases so we we are saying sql databases and another one is the no sql okay the opposite you can think of like a no sql database okay so no sql what is the full form it is a not only sql okay other than uh, other than the uh, other uh, the way of retrieving the language uh, will be of a different type okay it is a no sql so you can store the data so the type of data which you can be stored or retrieving can be of type like key value pairs okay key value pairs uh, it's like maps okay map means a, a particular key identifying uh, it is like um, say an employee peter uh, what is his mobile number okay i mean if you this as a key and this is the value for him, for his for this mobile uh, for this employee likewise key value pairs and the graphical structure of a data you can store it in the no sql data format and um, document type and also see uh, a big date uh, big table big table is actually uh, okay uh, uh, all these things whatever we are going to see the new technologies are all comes into picture with big data okay then only since data is vast there is a huge amount of data they are they are not used at all unused data so they are arriving at a solution like what we can do with the unused data okay those datas are some some datas are formatted some days datas are not structured so some datas are structured so if it comes to picture of a non structured data then how you can store it that is where this no sql database has come into picture some of the examples are like mongodb cassandra new 4g uh, 4g okay new 4g is the graphical data base and uh, couch db couch db is also there that we are not going to learn that is also uh, similar to cassandra databases cassandra couch db h base examples are all we say it as a, a column based family database column family databases then how the column family looks like everything we'll see so some uh, pictorial representation of sql databases and no sql database sql databases will have a structure as it is like this stored in the form of uh, rows and 
rows and columns and it is stored in the tables okay and it will have relation between other tables also if you consider this as table 1 this as table 2 table 3 you can relate between the tables whereas no sql databases the column families see graphical databases are represented in this way through the uh, edges and vertices we call this you no know, like um, how it will traverse through this structure and document databases are like a tree based tree based database tree based means a tree information if you can represent the data in the form of a tree structure then that you can call it as a documents or if you, the data is in the form of key value pairs then you can store it in the form of key value pairs okay this is a type of uh, no sql databases you can see whereas sql databases is always structured okay then furthermore so types of the databases which one we have to use it it is all depending upon the design decisions or the way of a data it is coming to you the volume of data matters okay uh, volume and the distribution now the technology like uh, distributed databases has come into picture okay where you cannot uh, tolerate the loss of data okay uh, loss of data loss of the data in the sense say uh, in olden days as data are stored in a particular server okay mm, like as i say it as a server and uh, maybe it can have a replication in other servers okay uh, like a server too say you, you can for, forget for time being you can imagine that all the data or the tables created are stored in a server if this uh, server goes down or the server is uh, not available at all then this uh, the data is uh, lost all the time okay so now we cannot uh, do that right because uh, we are uh, doing um, uh, uh, like uh, many many people are viewing the uh, like a videos in your netflix as and all if you say that videos are stored in a server and that server goes down then netflix goes down so that is you cannot tolerate it so in that cases the concept of distributed databases has come into picture where the data stored in a particular server is replicated replicated means a copy of data here will also be present in other databases too no other servers too okay so uh, based on that also you will decide like how you have to have your databases still the uh, traditional databases we call it as this rdbms databases are very good in certain areas okay um, and uh, when you wanted to go for a different type of a data or for the distributed nature and all then you can go for the other databases like column family document based graph based or key value based it is depending upon your uh, decisions okay so traditional databases are like um, see there are two things like uh, olap and uh, oltp okay online transaction processing okay and uh, online analytical processing analytical online analytics processing okay so transaction processing when you are talking about the banking applications or the financial sectors there way there is where the transaction happens between the user and the bank okay those time uh, the um, transaction should happen in a faster way this kind of overlap transactions or the overlap uh, applications are well suited or well up applied using the traditional databases okay traditional databases are not has moved out of the market but they will suffice or they will uh, suffice the um, what you can say the requirement of the online transactions in a very good way okay what does it mean is the transaction when you make with the banking sector or financial institution it should be faster okay it cannot uh, tolerate delays right they call it as a latency latency we cannot uh, allow it because uh, otherwise if it is in the network transaction in the network someone one may um, uh, tamper the data and get the information and get the money right so that is not tolerated in that cases and all you can go for the traditional databases itself okay when it is like a analytical processing analytical processing means um, analytics when i say data analytics it means you are going to do the some analysis of a data and you are going to arrive at a result an example i can talk in this is say um, i don't know whether it will suffice now uh, 
okay i will tell uh, okay say for example you are going to a supermarket okay and the supermarket uh, this is a commonly used example uh, normally how they arrange the products in the supermarket is it will be like in a way that the customer if he buys a product he will also be tempted to buy the other one say if you talk about a bread butter and uh, uh, jam okay normally the person who is going to buy a bread if he sees a butter next to it he will buy it okay but his intention is to buy the bread only and if he sees a jam next to it he will he can buy the jam also so how they used to uh, 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 arrange the uh, products in the supermarket in this way and if you enter into the supermarket also you will know that the products which are essential right the milk or the everyday products which we use the vegetables and sometimes it will be in the end of the supermarket so that what the person will walk through the supermarket i mean walk through all the counters okay he will have a glance and then only he will go to the essential one so in this way he is in he is increasing his uh, uh, what you can he is increasing the chances of the customer to buy something else also maybe he is interested in if he sees a something like a chocolate he can buy the chocolate also along with that so this is how they do the business okay how do they do this arrive at this solution in initial term initially they would not arrived sim simply they will not know like a everyone will buy a butter everyone will buy a jam and all right with the historical of data they would have seen the pattern of the uh, uh, customers who are coming to buy the bread okay and they are going going in search of the butter also or then they see okay maximum number of people who are coming to buy but bread they are also going to buy the butter so we keep it them together so that uh, whatever is related to that bread or whatever goes with the bread or with the, any um, sauces and all that all they will keep it together so that uh, the uh, purchasing of those products will increase in that way the profit will increase okay so this is the analysis this is what data analysis is okay in that type of uh, data where or if you think of this uh, netflix movies or uh, nowadays in uh, facebook and all whatever we view frequently it comes uh, to us right it pops to us and also in our uh, youtube if you s view a certain type of uh, videos and those type suggestions will come so th those are the analytics analysis which is uh, done with the history of data in that cases and all you can go for this kind of uh, how to store this kind of data like a netflix data or facebook data or uh, youtube data then you will go for the column family or the document based uh, databases or the key value based databases okay so when it comes to analytical part then you can use a database where you can use uh, i mean where you can store those databases for doing analysis then you can use this kind of unstructured um, databases we also say this as unstructured because uh, as i told like a netflix is and all uses a streaming data right live data we will not have a structure in that or some xml files if you think of you can call them as unstructured uh, not unstructured structure semi structured likewise okay that all you will read more in uh, when you see big data but our intention is to learn about only cassandra okay just uh, just about this okay is this okay is this making sense can I move on? Okay. Uh, madam. Yes. Uh, uh, in Cassandra, uh, you can say that uh, it will be store of uh, column family kind yes. of thing. Yes. So if we want to store a document kind of thing, so can we store it? in a cassandra or it is just for the no in cassandra you see if you wanted to store a data in the form of a documents then you can use it uh, the other databases like mongodb and couchdb sorry couchdb is uh, uh, document database not uh, uh, column family couchdb you can use it okay means uh, whatever the, our requirement we we can choose that particular database databases yes that's right okay okay when said that there is two database uh, one is original and other one is copy what is the need to do yes ma'am ah, okay what we doing this it will take more cost i think 
what is the need to do these things is like um, say uh, it is if in the live environment say you, i mean it will not take cost that's how that uh, it will work okay say um, you uh, you wanted to store you are storing some information in one server itself if the server goes down then you will not have that data right so that's the reason we are going for the replication replication means a copy of that data okay uh, in cassandra or any any of these are new distributed databases these are called the distributed databases where uh, if i say i store a data of an employee with an id 1 it will be uh replicated or copied to maybe um, uh, one, more than one uh they call this as a notes okay notes we'll see in a detail about this also this they call it as notes it means many number of computers or the servers you can think of service is nothing but the storage space right it will have a hard disk where you can store it hard disk of huge space okay there you can store the data so it will employee data will be stored in employee in us i mean in this node one also and also the node two nodes we say it is nothing but the computers or the servers which the different storage space okay with a storage space where you can store the data okay uh, and if, if if for example if one goes down then you can it is served okay how the uh, how it happens is all will be interconnected all will be interconnected okay and th this data will be replicated in a server 1 server 2 and server 3 also and if one goes down then the other will serve the data okay say for example i write a query to retrieve the employee id then from the server 1 i cannot retrieve it but still server 2 will serve the information okay in that way say how we can make that uh, the netflix videos are not live uh if if we put everything in a single server if it goes down then we'll say the server is down you cannot view any data at all in that okay or any videos at all so in our in for, for that we go for this replication it is not costly why because the replicated nodes or the uh, servers are of commodity types they say okay commodity okay they will not use high end servers okay as in relational databases it is not high end servers it is all commodity with the cheap prices only okay which can tolerate the uh, uh, that it can go down or it it can be a failure even if it is a failed you can get the data from other nodes right which are all connected that is the reason that we will go for this cheap hardware okay hardware it is okay hardware means data centers ma'am actually netflix and other uh, youtube like data will be in gbs or in tbs or in very large scale yes so that's yes. why i'm asking if we make replica it will take uh, more hard disk uh, and, and and data center will be large yes and yes so it is, is not, very large why it is not taking uh, more cost more not sure. cost say uh, you can relate it like a uh, same netflix data or the any datas that you store it in a relational databases of a single server okay storing it all the things in a single server and um, and uh, you are also distributing this data it is not only three nodes i am talking about it can be of 1000 uh, nodes together okay and the replication replication how many times you have wanted the copy that you can decide it okay uh, so the three nodes can have a copy the other three nodes can have other other data like for employee two data it will have okay so it uh, see uh, The, the advantages and disadvantages are there okay is rather storing in a single copy in a, even if it is huge the size of the storage units also will not be in gbs okay they will be on um, a more only not in a yes, server yes, gb right. yeah yeah that you can imagine right it will not be like a very small and all so uh, if that's what the store, storing it in a single okay. server and uh, distributing it into multiple servers is going to be cost effective only number of nodes is going to increase it but uh, uh, losing of the data uh, as the node increases uh, even of, of course the cost will increase okay L but uh, we don't lose the data all the time no so the business uh, solution will be designed in such a way that uh, yes, it should be always available nothing but it is high availability 
sorry yeah priority is data it doesn't matter how it will cost they will make replica i think yeah it is high availability all the time it will be present okay that is how the business has to run it even one data is one data center or data node loss then it will be available from the others okay but which uh, that is storing it in a single see when you talk about the mysql servers and all uh, those will be high end servers okay uh, that's what i told like uh, when you are doing the transactions uh, like banking transactions and all you cannot rely in this way okay because they can easily access one server and get the information or not here also there will be uh, duplication replicas replicas in the sense uh, uh, different nodes they will replicate it but it will be different done in a different way okay in that cases for like a banking transaction you cannot rely on this kind of a distributed architecture where data is replicated and available where it is not belonging to a um, low commodity so, uh, hardware okay i think we are okay, going to big data actually big data side actually okay i understood okay 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 any other doubts it's okay right uh, we will see okay we, when we start discussing with everything will come into picture we will see that so uh, what is a cassandra it is a open source open, open source uh, apache uh, project okay it is an open source apache project okay uh, anyone can download the source code of this and can write it it uses the column family data column family oriented database the storing of the data in the database will be of type column family okay we'll see uh, later on like how what is a column family how it is getting stored and all those stuffs okay and it is a no sql databases because uh, it doesn't follow any structure at all i mean for an unstructured data you can store it structure means organized it will be there uh, uh, not no structure i will tell you when i talk about the column family what is why i say it is a no not proper structure is for not followed okay and it is a decentralized database they say it big data technology and creation of a database spreads across the nodes okay before that to going to it a little understanding about uh, decentralized or distributed okay distributed databases so you can think of uh, in a cassandra like databases how it is the architecture wise they will have a multiple nodes okay <coughs> multiple nodes we say it as a computers only or the storage okay node this can be node where data is our storage unit only where data is our stored okay and they will all be interconnected okay in that way only you can uh, uh, data will be present in here data can be present data will be present here data will be present here and data will be present here too okay and data uh, part of a data can be replicated whatever the data can be replicated uh, it means it, it can they can kick a copy on this one okay this we call it as a peer this whole structure we call it as peer to peer uh, architecture okay it means a peer means you can understand no end to end po, end to end architecture because node 1 can communicate with node 2 node 3 node 4 and interchangeably they can communicate okay and the uh, decentralized is see uh, in other architectures or in the rdbms or if you also say other like uh, h base and all there is the architecture like master nodes and the worker or the slave nodes will be there okay i'll write it here okay so there will be like a masters and master node and many slave nodes okay many slave nodes okay so the master node controls the slave nodes controls means it do it does the administrative activities and it knows where the data is present data will be actually present in the slave nodes if you can think of like um, hadoop hadoop uh, hdfs it is a database uh, not database 
it's a file system or if you can think of HBase is a database okay all this uh, data uh, will be stored likewise and all this uh, server nodes will be controlled or monitored by the master okay master knows where the data is uh, present in the uh, in the servers okay uh, whereas in Cassandra, it is a decentralized in that in that sense it doesn't have a master at all each node will be uh, working as a master and a slave okay you can think like it doesn't have a master master at all there is a no master in the Cassandra okay that is why it is a decentralized database okay and distributed if you can say a database is distributed in such a sense that the data are distributed I can say in such a way like I say I have a data table okay column family table row 1 can be present in here okay row 2 can be present in another node row 3 can be present in another node and row 4 can be present in another node okay that is how it is distributed a particular data data table which we have created the column family table which we have created in itself can be distributed in different nodes okay this is a smaller way i'm saying just to, to understand the concept but hugely we will see it later on okay and replication it means i can say like a row one you also have a copy of that in data node two and in data node three row row one okay or any number of copies we can configure that how many number of copies we want added okay this is also distributed this hbase hdfs file systems are also distributed it means that they will also have a copy of the data in other nodes other slave nodes and but they are not decentralized not decentralized means they are not control uh, they are not control they are controlled by a master okay they are not working on its own whereas uh, cassandra is a decentralized and distributed database okay so this uh, cassandra or any other technology which we are going to see in our further classes are all belonging to the big data okay not python and machine learning but uh, other things like hadoop pig hive all those applications and the technologies are all belonging belonging to the big data big data is nothing but the huge amount of data which we cannot even imagine it which is keep on coming the huge amount of data can be coming from any sources any sources like um, uh, the customers okay purchasing okay like websites like ebay websites or the flip cards or the amazon websites or the iot's iot's is like um internet of things like uh, you can have a huge amount of data coming from the sensors say for example the sensors which are uh, that uh, camera is there no camera they fix it that's in that the sensors are observing the uh, cars or uh, traffic traffic signal informations or you can also imagine the stock market um, data those are all like a huge amount of data and data most of them are live data also okay so this is the this may be the source of data source means from where you get all this kind of data so that uh, for that data to work on with that technology which is nothing but a big data technology one of that is a Cassandra database okay and the creation of a database spreads across the nodes okay what they're saying is about creating of the database it is spreading across the nodes it's they say it's okay that we will see it on later how it works okay with the history I will stop we will see the further later on I think okay so history of a cassandra it is actually uh, was a project from uh, okay google okay, it was a combination of project from uh, uh, google's big data okay big table okay big table database they have a big, big table and uh, dynamo uh, databases of amazon okay they combine this they have its own their own uh, uh, flaws okay which they combine together in a facebook in facebook company to uh, come up with a different database which is nothing but the cassandra okay and then in 2009 that it is a made in 2008 it, the project was taken up by um, facebook okay and in 2009 it was uh, uh, given to apache apache is a foundation okay anybody can create any application or anything and go and give 
to apache they can take that and they can make the that project as their own project you can and they make can make it as an open source so that um, they will have the liability okay like uh, that uh, is uh, belonging to apache and uh, whoever is uh, going to do any code changes or want to give a new feature or applications to a project they uh, any user can do it and it will go to that apache foundation they will see whether that feature can be implemented in the application application like cassandra or um, hadoop or anything then they will release it they take the ownership of releasing it okay and that project it has become the top level project in uh, 2010 okay cassandra has become the top level project in 2010 and the first series which was uh, i mean what series it was given to apache is with the series 1.2 okay it, in the initial series and now it is like a cat center of 4 is also there later on we will do the installation of that okay so i will stop it here is this okay we will continue the rest about uh, the features and about the distributed each feature and about um, the SQL and uh, uh, relationship between the acid properties and what properties it possesses, the cap theorem, all the other things we'll see in the next class on the Monday class. Madam? Yes. Uh, nowadays, Cassandra is using by other any organizations? Yes, Cassandra is used by a lot of organizations because, like, um, I have a See like this Netflix, eBay, Twitter, Reddit, Oila. Many organization uses it. Uses means to store their data, they use that. Okay. Ma'am, is there an afternoon class today? Yeah, Java will be there. Why you don't want class? Yeah. No, I'm actually I want class. Huh? No problem, ma'am. Okay. Okay.